And now it's time for part two of the laundromat project. Today, I'm going to show you the actual room, the actual laundromat building itself, and all the machines that are in there waiting for a lot of repair and rebuild and cleaning and preparation. The building itself needs a lot of work. About the only thing we don't have to fix is the floor. Other than that, it needs to be done. So, uh, another big thing in this episode will be doing a uh, bearing job on a uh, large washing machine. That's a big job that people would pay a lot of money for unless you know how to do it yourself. Now, I'll tell you up front, the video quality here and uh, continuity and things may be a little bit off. I know that's unusual for a Loudmouth Tim video, but just so you know, because here at LoudmouthTim.com, home of online video, the longest running web series in the history of the internet, I want to make sure you get your money's worth in every video. So, um, the video was taken uh, over the course of rebuilding two or three different machines on several different days, and I tried to put things in order uh, as best I could from the video that I already had. Uh, there's a little bit of inconsistency here and there. Uh, probably the most notable thing is when I grabbed all my tubes of silicone, I got one that was white and all the rest are clear. So you'll notice that difference in the video. Eh, not a big deal. But anyhow, this is how you do the bearing job on a big washing machine. And here is the whole laundromat room itself. So you can see what I'm starting with. Here's the beginning of it. All this has to be fixed up, cleaned up, clear it out, reorganized, rewired, replumbed. All the equipment has to be fixed. And then we'll have a laundromat. Easy, right? Well, this is the before picture. This is what I'm starting with. I got all my machines in here. Waiting to be fixed and rebuilt. And the building needs a lot of work too. Look at this. It does have the cement slab floor, which is the only reason I picked this place. I looked at other places, but they wanted way too much money for what they had to offer. I'll put the dryers in a row right over here. I'll have washing washers right across the front and down this side and down that side. And maybe the small white washers against that wall over there. Water heater in the back. Waiting room, table, maybe a TV or something here in the corner. Unofficial bathroom. It'll be officially not available to customers because if it were it would have to be ADA compliant and there's no room to make the thing bigger. So as far as you're concerned, no there's not a bathroom. In reality, I'll leave it unlocked. The first and biggest repair job I have to do is changing the bearings in these four medium-sized machines and the two big 60 pound machines. And the bearings are these. And they are very worn out. This machine I have already repaired. Now listen when I spin this nice and smooth. There's some stuff in there. But the drum spins nice and smooth. Some little rocks or sand in there. Now listen to how this drum chatters when I spin it. See that? Bad bearings. This is my second 60 pound bearing job and this thing was tough. When I went to pull the pulley off the back, it was very hard. And then I 
was taking things apart, I was hitting the relief valve on this 8-ton jack. It couldn't push it out, so I had to go and get a bigger 20-ton jack. And what happened was this bearing was so rusted onto the shaft, even with a lot of pushing, pounding, oiling, holding a map gas torch in there for 20 minutes to try to heat and expand it all, it still didn't break it loose. It pushed out and bent this entire stainless steel thing to get that bearing out. And behind this stainless steel tub is a thick steel plate. And good thing the hole in that plate was big enough to let that bearing come through. Now I have to beat this back into shape before I take the cast iron trunnion off of there. And that has to all be sealed and not leak water once the thing is up and running again. This bearing came out the hard way. So I have to take my sawzall, cut the bearing off to get to the sleeve, and cut that off too. So it's been an adventure. Mechanically, there's nothing I can't handle here. A lot of the work is changing the rollers, cleaning it, cleaning out the gas burners and the dryers, changing some water valves, seals, things like that. None of that stuff is a real big problem. This right here, the bearing jobs, that is the big job in these washing machines. But with all my uh, years of experience in taking care of my cars and computer work, yeah, there's nothing scary in these machines for me. They try to make it sound like, oh, you've got to use our, our uh, laundry technicians to come and do all your work, and they charge you 100 bucks to show up at 100 bucks an hour once they're there. Well, not always. You do a little bit of thinking, a little bit of figuring, a little bit of research, looking up things online, watching YouTube videos. You can learn a lot. And I learned what I had to learn. I've got one down and four and a half to go. Eh, this will be a decent sized laundromat when I get it done. Big enough for my needs here. 1,100 square feet. This wall already has a window in it, so venting all the dryer exhaust out will be easy. The guy who owns the building is putting on a new roof and fixing all this drywall and changing the lights. rod supporting the steel plate which holds the jack so it can push off of this steel plate and push the shaft with a tub on it out the front through these old bearings. Let's see how well it works. came out about as easily as it could possibly have come out. Wow! The only one I've seen that wasn't rusty. Amazing! Why couldn't the other five be even half that easy? wasn't easy, but I got all the disassembly completed. 
I cut into the outer race on both sides, put a notch in it in the hardened steel and sort of whacking it with my four pound sledgehammer and it shattered and fell right off. The inner race gave me some trouble but I got it out of there. The outer bearing wasn't much trouble. The inner um, seal sleeve, that's over a quarter inch of stainless. Did the usual thing through that and I managed to do all the cutting without putting one mark in the surface there. So, this all needs to be cleaned up and then I can start reassembly. And my chisel is pretty much destroyed. Yeah, I'm putting a lot of sledgehammer hits on a tiny little piece of metal, so I shouldn't be surprised. Plus, it was a cheap Harbor Freight chisel. But I got my money's worth out of it. Now all the disassembly and cleaning is complete. I have the new bearings, seals, and sleeve ready to go. I have to put it all back together now. And I got this fixed as best I could with the metal being stretched in the middle. Time to begin reassembly. First thing is to put this stainless steel sleeve back on. They make it a very tight fit. You have to heat this up to get it to expand and go on there. I have a map gas torch and a propane torch. They say use two map gas torches. I say a second tank of that yellow fuel plus the burner tip to run it is a lot more expensive. Propane isn't quite as hot, but it's hot enough. And you know how Loudmouth Tim does things. Almost as good and a whole lot cheaper. That's what happens when it's, when it's cold. It doesn't fit over it. in place and done.
Got to put enough silicone on these bolts to make sure everything seals up good. Now the new bearings are all in place in there. The seals are in and greased up. All the silicone is sealing everything. All the bolts are tightened down. So it should be ready to reassemble. This is the inside of the front cover. I have to make sure this is really clean and put a lot of silicone on to seal it up really well. And the same with this, where the front cover attaches to. This has to all be sanded and cleaned really well and put a whole lot of silicone on it. I'm going to put on a thick layer of silicone to make sure this thing seals up again. Don't want to have a water leak. I already did this whole edge with silicone. Put a thick layer on there too. So that's what we've got so far. Now you see some of the big work I've been doing. All the other repair jobs on the machines are small in comparison to this. They just put a new roof on the building and now they have to come inside and fix everything. I've been talking to the gas company. I've been talking to the water company. I've been talking to the electrician. I've been talking to the uh, building code people and the uh, engineer to make the drawings and everything. So. A lot of stuff is happening, and uh, this better work out and make me some money because it sure is costing a lot of money right now. <laughs>